start it. Um, we talked about rate of change, and so I'm, I'm thinking of the quiz, okay? A lot of you did really good at, at finding the rate of change, but when there's a context involved, make sure you add units, okay? So miles per hour, right? Liters per minute, whatever it is, make sure you, you uh, get that right. So I returned the quiz, you should have it back. And my plan is to, if I can, make a correction video of it and just highlighting a few things. Also, if you are given an equation, so let's say this here, you, if, if it's an equation, it should be a line where you connect the dots. You're just finding three that lie on the line, but you should connect the dots. It's, it's not even a question, right? Um, if it's an equation, because that's what this is calling for, right? Now, if they were to say X mean, uh, represents the number of people and Y is the cost for an event, now there you got to be careful. Now they gave you a context. Now you can't, you can't do a line there. You would have to do dots. But if, it's, if there's no context provided, it's, it's given that it's a, it's a line. It's going to be a straight line. So if one of your dots doesn't line up, um, you're going to be in trouble. So we started off with just creating a table of values, like a couple of lessons back. I just told you, you know, grab negative one, one, and zero, right? We would just uh, create our table of values and graph from there like this, right? The truth is you can pick any three uh, values you would like. It could be negative two, zero, two. Really, it doesn't matter. So we started off with this. And then yesterday we started talking about find, use the intercepts and a third point to sketch this. Okay, so it's basically the same idea, except for uh, we're, we're doing it slightly differently. The x-intercept means that the y is equal to zero. The y-intercept means that the x is equal to zero. You plug them in and solve, right? And you find those points and they should both have a zero on them, right? And technically, in my view, you have enough to graph. But if the question asks for a third point, you pick, don't pick a ridiculously high number, pick a value that makes sense. And most likely, if there's a fraction in front of the X, then try to cancel out the denominator. So pick a value that would cancel out the denominator. That's what I would do. So if there's a negative one third, then I would have picked x is equal to 3 or negative 3, depending on which one, uh, what your graph looks like, okay? Make sure you have arrowheads. Go past your points, and the equation should be stated on either end of the line, okay? That's important. Um, and so there's that. And then number 3, we didn't quite get to it. Uh, so the graphs below show how the temperature changes over time at different locations. Match each graph to its rate of change and vertical intercept. Okay. Now, I, I, need, to, I need to tell you something, right? If the rate of change is positive, the line will be looking like this. If the rate of change is negative, from left to right, it's going to go down. Okay. So we can perhaps narrow down, find this one. Which one? This one goes up from left to right, goes up from left to right. This one goes down. So you technically narrow it down to this. This rate of change belongs to that graph because it's going down. And the vertical intercept, which is the y-intercept, is 0, 10, right? So this is uh, graph. Graph B belongs to C here, okay? And now we're down to these two. They both, both of these have an intercept of negative eight, right? Because they use a scale of eight here. So this would be negative eight. And this would also be negative eight. They use a scale of two here. 
So we can't really narrow it down based on that. We now need to look at this, two and one. Okay, so technically you'd have to find the rate of change individually. And I don't have a lot of time, uh, room, so I'm not gonna do the full, I'm just gonna here go y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that'd be 16 over 12, no, eight, sorry. 16 over eight uh, positive, so that's two, right? So I know that the rate of change of this one is two. I don't need to do the math to figure this one out. You could, but uh, I know that this is graph A. And so this must be graph C. Okay. So that's how you narrow down. Like try to narrow down if you have to match. That's an important skill for us to know. We know that this one goes up and this one goes up as well because they're both positive, right? You could all, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that because in chapter six, we'll talk more about the rate of change. The rate of change will be called slope as well. The steepness of the line, the bigger the rate, the steeper the line. Um, also, one thing that I'm going to try, I don't know if I did it with this class already. I'm, I'm checking here. No. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pause here so that's not on the next page. a house called by an electrician for up to six hours of work. Um, so we, I could ask you for domain and range here. I could ask you for a whole bunch of things, right? Um, in fact, why don't we do that? Let's practice the domain and range ones because it doesn't, it, they don't ask for it, but domain, we're going to do this in both ways, okay? Uh, set and interval. Most of you did very good on that. Some of you are flipping. You're not careful to put the lowest first and then the highest next. Okay, so you got to be careful. And the and the squiggly brackets. Okay. So for for domain, it's my x value. So I'm going from zero, and it's included because it's solid. I'm going to use t. And I go all the way up to six, X value six. So you kind of, some of you actually did the highlighter thing, which is great. That helps you go for it. So from zero to six. So when you're looking at a line, look at it from left to right for your domain and uh, bottom up for your range. So this would be zero to six interval notation, both inclusive. For the range, you're going from this is a 60, right? This is 60 here. And it goes all the way up to 300 because the scale is the scale is 60 here. So we're going to go 0 and there you see for that. So from 0 to 300 and that is 0 to 300 like that. So this is a it's closed on both ends and it's solid on both ends. There is no open circle, anything. So everything is included. So just a reminder, that's how that works. Uh, suppose the electrician charges $120 to complete a job. For how many hours did she work? Estimate using the graph. So that would be our first method. So we go where 120 is. So we start here. This is given. So our arrow goes this way and then down. So we would have to say, right, one and a half hours. The 
describing a graph, make sure when I ask you what happens between here and here, tell me what, what the change is in the y over the x, right? It's almost like your rate of change. A lot of you did well there. So that's it, just estimating based on the graph, but it's estimating, right? So we can't be 100% sure. Um, so next, find the rate of change and the y-intercept. Remember, it's delta y over delta x. Don't forget that that's really just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we're going to go find, grab some points from the graph that are strategically placed. Um, I mean, there are many to choose from. I'm going to go 3 and 180 here. And this point right here is 6, 300. Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit more. So let's make this x1, y1, x2, y2. So the change in the y, the change in cost, so to speak, is 300 minus 180. And the change in time is 6 minus 3. So this is 120 over 3. And that is 40, not just 40. The cost, which is the change in Y, is dollar. So we put that in front per hour. The y-intercept is sixty dollars. But it's a context, so you won't get get it wrong by adding units if there's a, con a context surrounded, right? So the y-intercept, I'm just gonna make an arrow going all the way up, right? That's your y-intercept there. There is no x-intercept, just making an observation, right? Uh, in this case. What does the rate of change represent? Uh, it means the hourly rate in dollars per hour. Or you can say, this is how much the person earns for every hour that is that is being worked, right? What does the y-intercept represent in this particular case? And that's the flat rate or a fixed charge, you can call it. Uh, taxis, right, they do that, uh, plumbers, any kind of service, like if, if you have your furnace issue, if you call somebody, there's a flat fee just for showing up, right? And so it's basically like the standard rate. It used to be cell phones, right? You paid a certain amount and you had to pay for whatever minutes you were over. Nowadays, everything is unlimited pretty much. Uh, so we're going to now go from a table or from the graph. It doesn't matter. We, we'll be able to use both and actually come up with an equation. That's our last step here. And we'll do a lot more of this in Chapter 6. Okay. So this is coming from the graph, right? From graph. We know that when you work zero hours, that you make 60, right? If you work one hour, you make 100. Two hours, you make 140. Three hours, you make 100. And I'm just adding 40, right? Because that's on top of the 60, you just keep adding 40, right? 180, four hours is 220. Five hours is 260. So you're able to find out 
Um, this is going up by 40 every time. So we know it's linear without looking at it, even though we know it is linear, we know it's a straight line and it's going up by one. This is another thing that some of you are getting wrong. To show some, something is a linear, it's a linear function, you have to see if it's constantly changing, if it's consistently changing by the same amount, both in the X and the Y. You're not worrying about if it's pointing to more than one Y value. That is already, that's just making sure a relation is also a function. But to show something is linear, this is the, the check you do. Okay. So to come up with the equation, this is what you do. Okay. Um, I think I will first start up, up here, down here. The equation in general is whatever the Y variable is, is going to be equal to the rate of change, okay, times the x variable plus the y-intercept in general. In general. So this is something you need to remember moving forward. So, and specifically to this situation, what's my Y variable? If you look up at the graph, it is C, okay? So we're gonna say the equation for this particular scenario is C is equal to the rate of change, which is 40. We don't put units in here, okay, in our equation. And X in this case is time, okay? Plus, what was my Y intercept? It was 60. Okay, so the Y intercept is there. X is really T, and the rate of change is that, and the Y is now C. This equation right here would have given you that graph that we started off with. Okay. And think about it, right? If you work, if you work one hour, that's one times forty. That's forty plus sixty. You make a hundred dollars would be the cost, right? Which is corroborated by this. And you could even do one and a half hours. Now that you have the equation, you could figure it out, right? Just plug in here and then you go, okay? Uh, suppose the electrician charges $120 to complete a job for how many hours did she work? So basically, it, we know that it's always X and Y. Right? That's always the point in every graph. What are they giving you? They're asking you for the X value if, you're, if the cost is 120. They're asking for X. Okay. So in this case, this is T and this is C. So you have to kind of go over from X and Y to the variables that are now in play. Just look at your axes and it's easiest as that, right? So they give you the cost. So using this equation up here, we're just gonna substitute 120 in here and then solve for T or X as you know it, right? 120 is equal to 40 T plus 60. The 60 comes over subtracting. Some of you do the subtract 60 on both sides, Good, don't, that's fine. Whoever was your teacher before did it that way, I'm, I can figure that out, okay? And then divide both sides by 40. I cancel that out. That's really, you can cancel the zeros here, right? Just cancel out completely and it's six over four, which is three over two, which is 1.5 hours. And we knew that already. Remember way at the top, 
we figured it out, like estimate by using the graph. If you made 120, we already estimated one and a half hours up there. Just always make sure you use the units that are involved here because this, this could be uh, different units, different situation, right? How much will it cost if the electrician stays for five hours? In this case, they, they give you what the time is. They would like to know this. So time and cost, right? So cost is going to be 40 times 5 plus 60. That's 200 plus 60. That's $260. That one is easy. So this is this goes back to um, the same thing, like determine x as if f of x is 120. Same thing, we did that before, no context around it. Determine f of x if x is equal to 5, you do it this way, right? So you just have to plug in the right values and, and you go from there. All right. And I have some grids there. Um, I don't know if I... this thing here. Graph the following using intercepts and third point. Try that one. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to use the intercepts. Remember, you've got your x intercept or the horizontal intercept, and just make sure you know y is equal to zero. So we go 0 is equal to negative 3 over 2x plus 4. We bring the 4 over. Negative, right? Then we multiply both sides by 2. So we get negative 8 is equal to, this cancels here, is equal to negative 3x. And divide both sides by negative 3 which gives you x is equal to positive 8 over 3, okay? And I, you, you, should, you will be able to use your calculator here, right? So what we found is this point, the x-intercept, and this is 2.3, no, 2.67, right? Yeah. So... You can think of it as that way. That will probably help you graph better, right? 2.67. And we find our uh, y-intercept is easier because you just plug in 0. So it's y is equal to negative. And show your work, okay? Some of you were just stating, right, the final answer. I need to see the work. So 0, 4. And this is the third point. Uh, we can let x equal to 2. So it's y is equal to negative 3 over 2 times 
2 plus 4, cancel out. Negative 3 plus 4, y is equal to 1. So you found the point 2, 1. Okay. If you find that it's out of bounds, change your x value. Pick a different one. Okay. So we can go 0, 4. And then 2.67, this would be 2, 3, so it's just, just before 3 there. And then 2, 1, 2, 1 is there. They should line up. Make sure it's a nice solid dot and make sure you use a ruler, okay? Uh, some of you weren't using a ruler. And don't do this. Okay, that'd be a line segment this is the equation. So you want to go, be, don't be shy, and just keep going and write down your equation there at the, at the end. That's how you do one of these, okay? So you're almost guaranteed to have one of these on the test where you need to use the intercepts, find the intercepts, and find a third point. You pick this value, okay? That's where that comes in. Can pick one, two, three, whatever, uh, and there you have it. Okay. Let's. Uh, I'm not going to do the rest. Uh, I, I feel like we have enough there. Let's back up to this blank page and um, just looking over. So I did one question like this. In, in a review, but let's graph the following. And this is not going to be a very uh, intricate graph. It's just going to be approximately. So what if I asked you to graph something that is continuous? In this case, I want it to be linear. And not a function. What if I asked you, hey, graph something that would meet all of these criteria? How would you do that? Continuous, linear, not a function. You got to make this happen. And it's actually more challenging than what you think, right? You've got to know what's what, right? You combine them. But this really tests your knowledge of this unit. So, okay. Continuous, I need it to be connected. Right? Linear, I need it to be straight. A line has to be straight. That, that's going to meet the, the criteria for linear. And then not a function. Fails the vertical line test. It's going to, you get, it's kind of, a circle would be, comes to mind right now. A circle would definitely fail, right? A horseshoe or something that goes back and, and causes the, the line to cut it more than once. So let's just make an X and a Y axis. And Oh, sorry, it has to be linear, so never mind. We can't do one of the circles, right? So that's out. Connect it straight, and it has to fail this one. Uh, this would be a good one to just say, hey, it's this line right here. It's connected. It's a straight line, but it would fail the VLT. This would fail the vertical line test because right, it, it literally crosses an infinite number of times right here at this point. Right? Another one. It's a function. Discrete. Not linear. What if I say, hey, I want you to graph something that is a function, passes, 
VLT not connected, sorry, and do, uh, not linear, right? It's, it's something like this, right? Something wavy, okay? It could be a circle, but if it's a circle, it would not pass the VLT, right? So let's see what we can do here. So discrete not connected passes the VLT. So how about something like that? It's not linear, it's not connected, and it would pass the VLT. Or right, you could do anything you want, really, because this would there's no double right if you had one stacked like this it would fail the vlt right what about this one three has domain of negative three to infinity and range from negative four to four, both included. <clears throat> and I would give you a grid if you had to do something like this. So we don't have to panic over that. Make our X and a Y axis here. Take a moment. You can do it right beside it, right? Like let's say you're scared of uh, making. If you don't have your chapter five review print copy, it's here. So if you come by, pick one up. Highlighters for this. Okay, let's use uh, orange for domain. I'm going to use orange for domain, and I'm going to use oh. I actually wrote range there and uh, green for range, right? So I know that for domain, I'm going from negative three somewhere over here. That's the lowest and I'm gonna go to positive infinity. So it's all inclusive, right? It's, it's going to positive infinity for sure. For the range, I'm going from negative four to four and it's close, right? So from negative four to positive four, that's it. It's close, right? It stays there. So you have a choice, right? You can start and it's all close. So I, this would be negative three and negative four. They're both close, so you don't have to worry about it. You could start up here solid like that and just make sure you make it somehow down to this point and then keep going to the right so you could go like this stop there and then go straight out because then right your your x is gonna be from negative three to infinity your domain 
positive infinity that is, make sure you put an arrowhead for you to take account the infinity, and you are from negative 4, I should put negative 4 here to positive 4, and this is negative 3x, right? So you're, the graph is contained. It is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Um, but you don't really have to worry about that part here. You don't because that, I'm not asking for it. I'm just asking to meet the criteria. Mr. Dirksen, could I have started down here and then gone up and then over? Yep, right, because it's still meeting that criteria. So you choose what you want to do. Be creative, right? All right, next. I make these up, so I have to uh, think myself, right? So keep that in mind. So, I'm, so domain is negative infinity to one, but it's not included. One is not included. So I'm going to make an open circle here. This is going to be my one and it goes to negative infinity. infinity. Like that. And my my uh, range is negative three, not included, and it goes to positive infinity. So let's see. I have infinity. I can go up here if I wanted to as long as this is an open because it's open for both i'm going to make an open circle here okay and i'm going straight if i go that way i'm going to go straight up Because my range, right, this graph is going to continue going infinity positive here for my range. And it's going to continue moving in the left and the negative infinity direction for my x, right? So that one right there would meet the criteria. Some students get really creative. Isn't negative 3 included? Oh, yeah. Why did I say it wasn't? Because of this, because of this, negative three is included, so you it trumps everything. Okay, you got it. Okay, no, no. You are right. So I have to. Uh, I hope you didn't use pen. I know how to fix it, but you're gonna have to erase it a little bit. Sorry, guys. Thank you for catching that. Who said that? Patricia, yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start negative 3 is included. So I'm going to start somewhere here. And then I'm going to arc here and then go up that's what I'm going to do because if you if you make a line go through negative 3 which should be solid that solves the problem sorry guys because then you this is not included the neg the one here is not included so if you're just looking at my X we're fine but the the negative three has to be included. So you can make a pass through negative three and then go up or something like that. You could also do just zigzag, right? You can just go straight down to negative three and then back up like that. You don't have to do a curve, right? It doesn't, doesn't have to be. Good catch. I always like